Next step in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the demo marathon, we've gone from reality to a little bit of virtual reality. So I'd like to call up uh, Paul Byrne uh, from the CTO Advanced Development Group, who uh, reports to me, I guess. Hi, uh, James. So come on, Paul. Let's, uh, let's see this, this wonderland that you've been playing with. Okay, so Project Wonderland. Um, what we've been looking at is, is um, building a virtual world that allows people to collaborate together. You know, we, we've, we're all working in very distributed teams now with you know, open, open JDK, open Unix, uh, Unix and uh, open Solaris communities. How do we, how do we make uh, distributed teams work together really well? You know, we, we're losing a lot of the experience you, you used to have with co-located teams. So how do, we, how do we provide technology to solve that problem? So rather than show a slide deck, um, we thought we sh we'd show you around the world. So here we are in a virtual world, and uh, I have an avatar who uh, may look a little familiar. <laughs> One thing we discovered during debugging is we can actually uh, look, to, look at the world through uh, James's glasses, which uh, could be quite interesting. So, yeah, so uh, I can't see my eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> now I know what they look like. Absolutely. <laughs> So, so what we have is this, this um, open virtual space that the entire source code for this project is open source, but also the art path is very open source. We're using traditional you know, um, um, art tools to actually create the content from, from things like high-end Maya tools down to, in the future, tools like SketchUp and Blender, which are, which are open and, and free. And, and we, we're encouraging the community to... Um, upload new content and, and build a world that, uh, that is customized. But what are the key features? Um, you know, I, I said this technology was really designed about getting people to work together, so there's, there's some key things we added. Um, the first is audio. So we have the ability to provide high quality streaming audio, both input and output, with the, with the goal that you can actually walk up to people in the world and just talk to them. You, know, you don't have to bring up an iron window, there's none of these funny flying right. icons, it's just walk up, have a conversation. The audio is mixed on the server, so we can provide different quality of audio to different class, depending on the, the network bandwidth. So let me give you an, an example of that. So as we walk up to these guys talking... Uh, if you can imagine a telephone system where when you picked up the phone, you never knew if it was down or not. You never put up with that, right? But that's sort of the primitive level around. I'll move away so you can still hear me. Um, so the audio is, is mixed. We have a distance attenuation, so as you move towards groups of speaking people, the sound gets lower, and as you move away, um, the sound gets quieter. We have sound walls, so if you're in a private space, other people can't hear you. Um, and we, ha we process the audio in stereo, so you get some cue about where the, the people are in space. Right, so, so m most people, when they first see this, they go, oh, that's the open source version of Second Life. They do. That, that's a comment we've had a couple of times this week. I'm yeah, yeah, um, but it's not. It, it's certainly not. I mean, it, it's, it's all pure Java. One, one, of the, one of the nice features that we're, we're looking to explore is, you know, you can add content to this world visually, but you can also put Java behind it. Both on the client and the server, you can provide Java code that manipulates the world. Full featured programming language. We can do scripting too, but you know, right. let's, let's do some stuff with, with well, all so, so, so like in, at, at the back end of this thing, it's the, it's the Dark Star game server. Indeed, yeah, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Let, let me just show, um, show one other key feature. So this is really the, the most important feature for the project. In the, it's the ability to run desktop applications in the space. So this is a standard Firefox window running on, on this, this um, Unix machine here and I can interact, to, interact with it. Right, so this isn't a screen capture. This is not a screen capture, this is a fully running native X application. We can also do Windows applications. Right, so, 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 so a lot of this is, is using technology that, that's a, and, and, and expertise from the Looking Glass project. Absolutely. And, and many of you may remember Looking Glass from, from years back, which is a really cool thing. But what we've done in Wonderland, one way to think of it is taking looking glass and turning it inside out. Absolutely. And, and, and the goal is here, you know, so I, I'm standing here working on my, on my browser in this case, but let's imagine it's NetBeans, I've got, you know, I'm running some code and I, I have a problem. You know, instead of having to phone someone up and, and have a conversation, you just say, hey, come over and have a look at this. And they can approach you in the virtual space and they can see the application. They can take control of the application and you can work together making changes interactively just to solve you know, real world problems. So the other thing I wanted to show, so this, this, is, a, this is a team space that we have here. And, and, and our goal is to actually have teams create spaces for their projects and their communities. Um, this, this is supposed to be a team space for this project. So as we, as we look around, you can see timetables and 
these are snapshots of applications, but you know, in, in, in production you use the real applications like I showed a minute ago. So you know, let's create spaces that, that are completely engaged, have all the content for the projects we're interested in. And then we're looking at technologies um, to allow people to express interest in those. And so, so that even if people aren't in the space, you still know that the, the project's very active. So you know, if, if you want a bit of peace and quiet, then uh, it's a virtual space. It's a very large virtual space. So uh, you can have your own office. And it can be a large office, which is, which is rather nice. Um, with a view. With a view. So you know, here, here I am. Everybody gets a window. Absolutely. Here, here I am hacking on my code, you know, I can invite people over. But, you know, we're, we're trying to work in larger teams here. So one of, the, one of the concepts we've been working on is, okay, so how do I share my documents with people um, without having to, you know, jump through a bunch of dialogues and say, oh, this guy can see this, this guy can see that. One of the things we thought, well, let's, if, if I want to share this, the concept of the application with people in my team, why don't I put it on the, on, the, on the transparent or the glass wall into the team room? So I slap it on this wall and then everyone in the team room now has access to the application. And we can control whether it's just view access or whether it's, it's read write access. So I have another application running here. So here's um, OpenOffice running in world. Um, let me start the slideshow just to show it's a real application. There we go. So here's our boss slides from the other night. I'm actually going to change the view. So we have you know, different views because, of course, you don't really want to be watching the uh, working applications with your avatar in front of you. And this is the slide I wanted to show. So um, the project is actually a culmination of a number of projects from a number of groups inside Sun. We use Project Dark Star as the back end, which is the Sun game server and provides the uh, persistent, scalable back end infrastructure for, the, uh, for this technology. It's really targeted at games, and, and in many ways, this is, this is a game, or could be considered a game technology. It has a lot of the same um, features. On top of that, we have Project Wonderland, which is the client you're seeing here, which is the, the rendering engine, engine based on Java 3D, has the system for providing um, network streaming and network delivery of, of the content, but also provides a very, very um, close security model so that you can create secure spaces in the world and control who gets access to those spaces, who gets to see content. On top of that, we have um, a, a team in Sun Labs working on MPK20. This is a project to actually take this technology and figure out how to apply it to everyday life at Sun. So hopefully uh, we can start having virtual meetings with your avatar in, in three space. Yeah, well, one of the things that's really exciting about this is you really can get people from all over the world essentially collaborating together in the same space. And, Absolutely. You know, if we just did it inside Sun, it would be a really cool thing because I mean, Sun's kind of an, in, an, an unusual company because our engineering is all over the world. Um, you know, we have, we, we have engineering teams, you know, every friggin' time zone there is, which makes life really exciting. You know, so, so, so today's, you know, opening demo was done by our, our, our group in Russia. And we've got a great Russian engineering team. They're really large, they're really vocal, they're really wonderful. They're... A way away. They're a ways away, <laughs> right? And, and, you know, interacting with them is hard. Just because you have to go to you have to go to St. Petersburg, you know, the, despite the fact that it's a really delightful city, you know, you can't spend that much time in airplanes. Absolutely. And you know, just doing like teleconferences, it just isn't the same. Yeah, I mean, with teleconferencing and sort of uh, telephony meetings, you know, with, with a physical meeting, you know, you have your meeting, that's great, and then as you're leaving and getting going to the coffee machine, that tends to be where the work actually happens, where the, you know, the connections get remade and the, the ideas get spawned. So those are the sort of things we're trying to encourage. The last thing I wanted to show was um, just some an animated geometry ideas we had in the space. So this is this is a product demo. This is uh, Thumper, which is a disk subsystem that Sun builds. Um, but imagine, imagine education content in here. So you know, we, we've modeled a, a flat sort of office type space here, but, but this is a three-dimensional world. It's a, it's a volume, and we're not going to put a floor in, so it's, it's this huge space. So you know, we could build a little small solar system simulation up in the space somewhere, and then teachers could take their class around that space and explain what's going on. We can use this as a very, a very secure, very embedded environment. Schools can stand up servers. The whole model is to provide the entire infrastructure to everyone. So they can stand up their own servers, they have their own environment, it's very secure. Um, everything you've seen today, with, with the exception of the audio system, is available for download today. The audio system is still stuck in legal review, uh, we'll, we'll get to that real soon, and that will be part of the download too. All right, well, thanks a lot, Paul. Thanks, James. Uh.